Welcome to another episode of the Unpackers podcast. And it's the podcast in which we continue exploring the world of trading and we keep opening new chapters. And today we're going to talk about Forex. And for that, we brought a real Champions League heavyweight with us, <laughs> which is Max van der Hagen, founder of AO. Welcome. Super. Yeah. Thank you guys Welcome. for having me. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm honored to be here. Great to have you. Yeah. Good to have you, obviously. Uh, yep. And <laughs> I'm here as well. Yeah, here as well. <laughs> Just chilling. Yeah, Yip, Yip is, a, is an extremely good guide and knows a lot of people by now, and he keeps pulling in new uh, new guests. And really, for us, it's it's we're just you know busy really understanding still one trade, which is which is trading uh, crypto. Uh, but you keep pulling in new guests. But I think that's that's nice f as a starter um, because, like I said, we started in the bull run buying some Bitcoin. Yeah. We, we you know we we we, we climb, climb down that uh rabbit hole we're still in there right. first we did it for the tech <laughs> and afterwards for the fun mm -hmm. and now i'm annoyed that i don't, don't print heavy green numbers yet yeah but if i were to do this all over again yeah you know, let's say for the people who listen to this maybe in a couple of months when the hype is hopefully really back mm -hmm. and they listen to this podcast um would you advise them if the goal obviously is to print some good numbers <laughs> Would you advise, it can be a biased answer. <laughs> right, of course, of course. Let's go. Would you advise them, yeah, to start with crypto, or Forex, or, or any other, yeah. you know, product to, to invest in? What would you do? It's, it's a very good question. I think it kind of depends, like what you said, the goal here is to make green numbers and you actually, with anything in the financial space, you want to make money. Everyone kind of gets into the financial space, whether they're trading stocks, whether they're trading crypto or Forex to eventually try to make some money. And majority of them, unfortunately, do fail in that case. But um, it really depends, in my opinion, on what your own characteristic traits are. Do you want to be actively like learning the craft and trading? I would then dive a little bit deeper into crypto or Forex trading. Do you want something more passive and less stress? then you'd be looking into maybe stocks or indexes. Right. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. And you went for Forex, obviously? I went for Forex. Um, I did that because my interest kind of sparked when I did uh, economics at a higher level. So when I did my international baccalaureate, I had a great eco teacher who was very into the whole foreign exchange aspect. So he came from the Philippines and he was an expat. And that's kind of where my interest came in, being born in Stockholm as well, uh, living in Switzerland and then moving to the Netherlands. I've experienced three different currencies in my life right. and my family as well. And, you know, hearing their conversations, you know, my parents talking about, oh, we have these Swiss francs, we're moving to the Netherlands and we got to transact that to the euros. And likewise, when I was born in Sweden, it was the Swedish krona. Um, my interest was in Forex, in the exchange of different currencies. So... I chose that route very early on, as soon as I could like open an account legally. <laughs> Didn't really go so well. Learned a lot of lessons throughout the way um, that maybe we can talk about in this podcast. So yeah, yeah very, sure. very excited. Yeah, of course. Uh, why not? What, 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 what were the couple of lessons that you learned? Uh, I think everyone learns that in any niche is that you're not going to be printing those green numbers very quickly uh, unless you got very lucky and you got let's say with with some sort of hype behind you and you've got this momentum to really follow you through right. with uh you know a big investment but that facade kind of fades away very quickly um right for me it took i think two years maybe even three before i really got something consistent out of it without some lucky hurdles along the way uh, and that goes for everything i think actively day trading whether that's crypto and maybe you guys can say that from your experience as well and maybe yep from your experience as well it's gonna take a little bit of time before you consistently get something out of it. you can have these lucky spikes right you know people that flip yeah, something sure. at the yeah. beginning and i had that as well you know you do those account flips and you're like oh you put you put 100 euros in with this broker and suddenly you got that bonus deposit <laughs> and you're like oh i'm gonna retire Let's my go. parents i'm gonna yeah. retire my parents the next day you know if you're i do this yeah. like, it only takes 11 flips to be a millionaire and you're like oh i can do this 11 times you quickly learn that you can't and that no one actually can whether that's a liquidity issue or anything it's right. just not right. as tangible as you believe it is yeah so i but the 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 years you mentioned could be a, a pop quiz question yeah because uh the two three years 
I also heard from you. You have mm. from crypto side, right? Mm -hmm. It's a learning curve that consists of two years, three yeah. years of learning. Is that right? Is that the parallel? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, definitely. At least like until you get like those lucky spikes and yeah. they, they are a bit more sustainable. I think that yeah. takes around one to one and a half years. Yeah, right. But to really, truly trust your system and, and trust your profitability. Yeah. Takes at least two to three years, yeah, hundred percent. And I think that's that's it. It's not more or less what you're trading; it's how you're trading it. Right, right. Because what you're trading, whether it's crypto, forex, stocks, or indexes, is fine. But the biggest issue, and that's kind of what I like to focus on as well, whatever instrument you're trading, is you know who you are as a person, mm -hmm. your psychology behind it. You meet yourself along the way, and you will do those stupid mistakes, and it's this constant you know, pendulum between fear and greed and whatnot, that you have profits and to iron out those creases just takes two to three years, 100%. Longer. Longer. For sure. For sure. I don't know. That's tough. What, it's what are the differences between the two markets? Because obviously, uh, forex markets exist longer, they yeah. are more regulated, yeah. they, 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 they act differently versus, you know, the 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 up and upcoming new kit on the block not anymore with that much but what are the differences um i think on paper black and white the biggest difference is obviously the regulations that are involved um right. and the overall purpose of the market right forex is there actually not to be speculated upon you have the world we have 181 different currencies it's difficult to have unison between different countries mm -hmm. to trade Whereas the speculation aspect of Forex is actually a fraction of the global purpose of the market itself, right? We, we've been from, let's say, a turnover of roughly six to now seven, eight trillion a day. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I only need a little piece of that <laughs> eight trillion and right, I'm right. going to be a millionaire. Yeah. But uh, that, that's what everyone thinks when they, they come into Forex. And it's I've used that marketing as well. <laughs> I'm like, we're in a market that's seven million, seven trillion turnover a day. And all you need is a small piece of that cake. It's sure. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that bigger aspect of it, of that seven trillion turnover a day, maybe only 220 billion is speculation. That's still a big number. You're like, whoa. Okay, well, okay, sure. whatever, you know, it was, cake. Yeah. it was, it's still a big cake. All yeah. I need is a part yeah. of that 220 billion. But then you look a little bit deeper and that is the big firms that are speculating on, let's say, high frequency on investment banks and whatnot. And retail speculation is only a couple hundred million. And ah, right. then again, you're thinking, oh, a hundred million is still a big number. Big still, numbers, yeah. All I need is yeah. one of those a hundred millions. I'll, yeah. be, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be set. Yeah. Um, but the big difference is Forex, in my opinion, and again, um, whether that's factual or not, it, there's a purpose behind it. You need exchanges, you need to exchange your currencies, whether you're going on a holiday, right? Um, and you go from Europe to the US, you're going to have to exchange your euros for dollars and vice versa. When you go to Switzerland, Swiss francs, you go to the Scandinavian countries, you're dealing with three different crown currencies. Uh, you go to Japan, obviously you're dealing with the yen and whatnot. It, it, there, there's, it, unfortunately, the world has developed in a sense that we have right. different currencies and right. we just need to figure something out to make that work. Yeah. Whereas crypto, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, the speculation behind crypto and the reasoning behind crypto was actually to kind of uh, go against government policies, right? Uh, privacy. Mm -hmm was very important at the right, early stage right. of the crypto. That whole debate, yeah. Yeah, that whole debate, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and that's kind of where it came in from. And and that's where, let's say, I, I came into crypto. do believe I have affinity with crypto. I've got a bag that is down quite a bit, but that's due to my <laughs> own mistakes. Uh, right. But my affinity with crypto is um, that the purpose more behind it was to make stuff quicker, transactions quicker, mm -hmm. which I totally vouch for and I can back that. And the private aspect of it um, but aside from that what we see now is a lot more speculation based right uh, with meme coins oh hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah no, no, the, whole, the, whole, the whole blockchain <laughs> we're in it for the tech debate uh, the, well he's still in, it's focused in, I'm still I'm, in it for the tech since 2017 yeah okay. that's what I tell myself yeah yeah you, you stay in but the tech stay in the tech that's it. exactly the reason why your last sentence was very interesting because it's not really crypto that's uh, uh, debatable for for privacy or whatever mm -hmm. 
uh, also, but it's 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 uh, only uh, uh, built on top of the blockchain engine. Yeah, and it's the engine itself that's uh, transactional, very fast. Yeah, gives you the security, gives you the privacy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, right. So we'll let that. Let's not step into that room. <laughs> good, good stuff. We keep speculating here. Yep, you also uh, trade forex every now and then, but not very passionately. I haven't done that for a while, actually. I I, I used what to happened? do it. I used to do it every now and then, um, but I used to do it during the times where crypto wasn't really volatile or where there wasn't a lot of volume. I can remember yep. like the range that we formed before or while we were forming the bear market bottom, at some point crypto just wasn't moving anymore. Right. And I know that like basically my, my system, it works on other assets as well. So I just traded some EU and didn't really make the same amount of ROI as I made on crypto, but still crypto wasn't moving at that time. Yeah. So I had a lot of spare time and a lot of time and energy to to put it into different assets. So yeah, back then I, I traded some euro as well. But at some point when crypto started moving mad again, I was like, yeah, why would I even look at euro now? And then just just trade my crypto assets. I yeah, know, fair. I mean, yeah. I think that's the biggest difference, right? Crypto, you talk about volatility. Yeah. That's the key word in this aspect. Right. Crypto is a lot more volatile. Yeah, but yeah. But and and. With that being said, there's, you know, I cannot even come close to the gains the guys are making on crypto percentage wise, right? That's, yeah, just that's a key word, percentage wise. Percentage wise, yeah, sure. You, um, is it because I remember that also in, in when you started, you know, uh, sharing some some uh, forex lessons mm -hmm. and then that st and stuff like that, the crypto market was really uh, unreliable as yeah. well with these spikes. You know, yeah, you yeah. was burning money on on yeah. on, on fuck up setups. Yeah. <laughs> So, is and is that the same with forex, or is that sort of the base level is always the same? So if you have or uh, much higher uh, reliability, so once you have a system for that, you can much easier rely on that all the time. Is that a right thesis? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think um, that's kind of where the nuance comes in of people being bored of trading forex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was about to say, yeah, that, yeah. I no, think it's a lot more boring. A hundred percent. It's a lot more monotone, and that's right. good boring but, but profitable so, sorry there's a big difference here <laughs> big yeah. no, no no big big difference in the sense of uh look the, the the speculation and that's why i love diving into the psychology of things it's all based off of you know you're you're firing away at these like dopamine your cylinders mm. are going crazy and when you see like these yeah. moves in your market you're like this gambling fiend behind the charts seeing you know these fluctuations where with forex you don't get triggered you know, if, yeah. if you're a good trader for me, the charts are bland, and that's good. Like, I love that it's so mundane. Right, I, s right. I wait for one specific thing, one or two things. I see it, whether or not I see it, that's my day. I don't go searching for things because the market is moving in more erratic ways. Whereas, um, obviously, it, it's two different, you know, traders, right? I think with mm -hmm. crypto, you need to be a lot more accurate in a yeah. sense of you need to filter through all of these crazy movements and not yeah. kind of get caught up with the FOMO yeah. and, you know, the greed and whatnot. Whereas with Forex, it's just, you don't have all of that erratic mm. movements. So you are more focused on being patient. That's a very good trader. Let's be completely honest. Good Forex traders are not going to be the guys that are sitting on the one minute chart taking like <laughs> five trades a day. In terms of, let's say, retail forex yeah, trading, obviously, sure. when you yeah. go into the professional aspect and you're talking about liquidity, you're talking about DMA, whole different ball game. But if we just compare trading forex like a platform and crypto as a platform, you're not going to have the crypto type of traders on forex because the market just doesn't move as fast. Definitely not. Also, the thing is, I think with forex, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's a lot more correlated or yep. like inversely correlated than with yep. crypto. That is what I like about crypto. There's a lot more outliers. Yeah. Whenever, like, for example, there's a, a day where Bitcoin or Ethereum are barely moving, and you still have like these altcoins that you know are like listening to your trading system. And then, yeah, for right. example, yeah. one of them is uh, having a very green day or a very red day. And then you know, okay, maybe I can play these kind of alt alt altcoins because they might be outperforming the market the remainder of the week or the remainder of the month, even though that the other assets are not moving. And I think that's, to me at least, like one of the bigger bigger differences and why i prefer crypto over forex because i am the kind of guy that 
likes of dopamine spikes. And... How, how how often do you, let's say, trade uh, a day? Like you, you can easily get a trade a day, right? I don't anymore, to be fair. Like, but if you I, wanted to, yeah, you can. Yeah, and that's beautiful. Of crypto, it gives be, you all these because there's like 30, 40 different assets that yeah. you can check every day. <laughs> and if you want to, I mean, you go crazy as well. Yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th that's the thing. Like, if you want to, I can open up all thirty or forty different charts, and maybe there's like twenty charts not showcasing me anything. Yeah. But then on the other twenty charts, I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Why not? take this one yeah, yeah. And that's like the the inexperienced me that was doing that and yeah. now i just know i have seven eight altcoins and even though bitcoin and ethereum are moving mm -hmm. somewhere along that week there's yeah, a smart. decent probability that one of those seven eight altcoins is going to be an outlier that I can trade. Yeah. You right, know? Right. Maybe maybe it's not and then then I don't take a trade yeah. for a week or two weeks. I don't care. But that's like at the beginning also one of my biggest mistakes that I was just checking so many different charts because yeah, at some point there was gonna be an outlier. And then I was like, okay, yeah. so many green candles. I need to hop in here. Yeah, yeah. I, I that's what's driving me crazy. I need to but I mean that that's what makes the big difference between let's say a good yeah. good crypto trader and I would say an unexperienced one is filtering out the noise. Yeah. And you yeah, do that yeah. super well. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. But if you know how to trade forex decently and you know you, you can do crypto and I don't know, I don't know, from I don't know, in in the hot months of the year. Well, cold month, but the hot months, if you will, and in the summer period you could do forex as well. Yeah, let me put it like this. I believe that we are going into a very long bear market after this bull run for crypto. And I think volatility and volume are going to dry up massively again. And yeah, and then there is a very decent probability that I'll also be trading EU and uh, probably even NQ, NASDAQ. I'll probably just copy trade Max. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> All on Max. Link Easy copy, does it. Link, Easy does it. Link yeah, copy trade it to Max's account and no uh, get some passive income there. <laughs> and that's because you just said no okay. the market is going to be boring. And then you step yeah. to the forex side. Yeah, because like f to me, the biggest advantage for crypto, like I said, is the, the volatility and the volume and then just the outliers. And if right. you don't have that anymore, right. Right. there's no point in trading maybe crypto over EU or Nasdaq, if I can still get a few percentages a month with uh, EU uh, or NQ. Yeah, fair. That's like my future plan, but yeah, who knows? Maybe crypto is gonna go mad for five, six years, who knows? Parabolic. Yeah. 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 And then you're still young, so <laughs> <laughs> feel free to then step over to- Hopefully I'm retired to and never have to trade again. You just mentioned, uh, Max, that you have, you, you're, you're, you're like a fisherman waiting there, you know, to, to, to that until the fish swims by yeah what is that fish what does your a plus setup looks like what is it's it's really not like you know guys kind of repack stuff in a very manner that it's like a holy grail we it, always talk about liquidity by the way and this guy he truly is a master of liquidity so that yeah. i think is an interesting no, no liquidity discuss. it's it's people like to to put stuff in a way that it seems as if they figured something out, something new or like the, the golden grail or something that has never been done before. <laughs> for me, it's, it's, it's really not rocket science, right? For me, <laughs> for me, it, for me, it's, it's, it's very simple. Um, obviously having a little bit more experience in the whole supply and demand aspect of trading and, and being surrounded by, let's say veterans that have been on the trading floor back in the day with the pieces of paper and the actual trading pits and the whole shouting and the crazy gang signs they do at each other. Um, it, it's all supply and demand based and anyone that tells you otherwise, whether it's pattern recognition or whatnot, it, they're, it's all fine. But my A plus setup is a tech based pattern that has been you know, tested and that is just very repetitive. Right. I know support and resistance traders that make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I know trend line traders that make a lot of money. Guys that can even trade head and shoulder patterns and that make a lot of money. But it's because they've tested this pattern, this scenario that has happened often enough. And more times than not, they're profitable because everything else is in check. So my entry model, if you ask what's my entry model, it's it's really not rocket science. We we take out liquidity. You you do the same. Yeah, yeah it's basically like I saw your reel today. You drew the same lines that's it yeah whether you want to call it a break of chalk uh, you know break, <laughs> break of structure you have the change of character yeah. we like to yeah. call those chocolate bars yeah. uh, chocolate bars yeah, chocolate soup, bar turtle, turtle soup, soup whatever yeah, turtle soup, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah the infamous turtle soup yeah right <laughs> tragic um <laughs> but um 
all of those are just entry patterns, right? Those are all, you know, tech-based entry criteria. And for me, that's something that has just been rigorously tested, collected my data on it, and you've got the set parameters, what you want to risk on these setups. But that's not the hard part. That's not new. That goes way back to, you know, before they even had computers, before they even had charts, uh, all supply and demand, all just pressure points, choke points, and whatever instrument you are trading, whether that's stocks of a company, crypto, okay, crypto may be a little bit different, but, you know, whatever is back behind that, right. Uh, right. indexes or Forex, the instrument is all based off of the feel, feelings of uh, the, the buyers and the sellers, so liquidity. Right. In a right. nutshell, long nutshell. It's, it's, it's <laughs> interesting, I guess, Max, because he's he's um, his whole body language is saying a lot of stuff that he, you know, that he's not saying, you know, with in this conversation. But yeah. I, I I know that because we also had a, a conversation up front to the preparedness. I know there's yeah. so much more behind there's, you. There's so you, much more. Yeah, you are really a veteran. Uh, but I think it's good, to, you know, to to touch that a little bit upon that. Um. Because you're founder of AO. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that, what you're doing? Yeah, so that's a really cool name. Anomalies Observatory, something <laughs> flashy. Um, but that's that's pretty much just my one-on-one -on -one program. Um, and where I really fixate on is making that very tailor-made. Many people, especially, let's you look at big commercial names, what they like to do is offer you this package and kind of that's it. And from there, whether or not it makes sense for you, that's what you got to deal with. You're on your own. Uh, you're on your own. Yeah. Here you go. Here's a nice book with my logo on it and a pen and a, <laughs> and a squishy toy and, and good luck, USB drive. You know, it works uh, and you get a little bit of knowledge. But you promise to make them a successful Forex trader. Yeah. 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 So for me, what I, uh, I would say differentiate in is that I try to play very much on the active feedback with mm -hmm. my students. So you come in, you learn your knowledge. And from there, um, you also trade on, let's say, accounts that I give you. These accounts give you insight. They give me insights of, you know, every trade that you take. And from there, we do these active feedback sessions where we just correct everything as right. soon as possible. Right. So the goal here is that I take seven years of experience and I kind of crush that down and kind of ram it in like one year with these students um, to avoid the pitfalls that I've fallen into and to just make sure that all the knowledge is tip top. And from there, it's just working on their psychology. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And and we just concluded that that you know ninety nine percent of the people you know stepping into this world of speculating starts with crypto. Yeah. Who are who are guys or girls who are you know knocking on your your door? What are their correct characteristics? Um, I think the th there's a high level of dedication that majority of my students have as well, uh, and the people that are very interested are also the guys that really. One, have the ambition to, let's say, learn more about the craft itself and the underlying mechanics. I think that's kind of the characteristic trait that I portray mm -hmm. a little bit on my socials as well. Um, and they understand that it's also not this get-rich-quick scheme, uh, that it's going to take some time, whether or not you've got something else going on, like a full-time job, or you're a student and you're doing this part-time, um, I make sure that you get hit with the realization that it's not <laughs> going to happen overnight. Uh, and I think to some people that's very appealing. Uh, and I think you can back that as well with, with your one-on-ones that I think that's the transparent aspect of it is we're here doing this one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. Um, it, it's not going to be plug and play. It's not going to be, ah, here is, here's the information. This is going to work and you're going to have right. a Lamborghini right. within, you know, two months. Yeah. Uh, that it's, it's, it's a lot of work and, and, life happens you know people they come and they go uh, and that's what i put down with my students as well is that let's manage expectations how we want to do this um right. so lots of transparent realistic people that are dedicated in the but are they are they yeah uh, are they slightly older and let's say and uh, and, and the, did they start out first in crypto as well and did did do they then deviate towards uh, forex or there, there's not really one umbrella I'd like to put them under. Uh, I've got guys that did um, that did come from crypto and you know fumbled there and came to forex, mm -hmm. and I've got guys that went straight to forex and are like, okay, hey, I wanna I wanna take it away. I've got 
older guys uh, as, as well before. More so. life experience. More life Let's experience. Not call them older. <laughs> I've got wiser guys. Uh, yeah. I've got young guys, you know, that that are just fresh and that are like just want to trade, um, just like me when I was just 18, 19, that I want to trade Forex. So both sides of the spectrum, I think it appeals. And that's the beauty of it. It can appeal to anyone um, that has the dedication and the spark to trade. But yeah, like the, the thing you said about managing expectations, that's Super the hardest important. part yeah. and, and also the most important part. I think I had a new student coming in a few weeks ago as well and he came from one of the Dutch groups, Dopey Cash. Me. And he said, yeah, I've been there for, for a year now and they they taught me all this stuff, but I'm still nowhere near profitable. They no. just draw a line and then they set an entry and a stop loss and then they take profit target and no, they it. are profitable. And they are profitable because... They've been in the game for a long time. Right. But what he doesn't realize is the psychology that comes with it, the mm -hmm. consistency that comes with it, and that they have developed a system that has taken them years and years mm -hmm. and years. And his expe expectation was to be in there for six months or a year, learn their way of technical analysis and executing, and then be yeah. profitable. But yeah. I already told him before he bought the one-on-one, the -on -one, that's not the way it works. Mm -hmm. Same goes... For me, if I'm going to teach you my system, it doesn't mean that after our six, seven sessions together and you you know my system and you know the drill because that's not the hard part. Mm -hmm. like I can explain it to anyone and, yeah. and give the exact triggers and, and all of that. But the hard part is going to come afterwards when you're going to have to execute it yourself and psychology comes along and, and, and you're going to lose trades and life yeah. is going to hit and... Yeah then to still <laughs> trust your system and remain consistently profitable, that entire process is going to take two to three years, maybe for some people four years. And yeah. and he was like, oh, really, really? I was like, yeah, it's, it's not that Dopey has taught you the wrong, the wrong stuff. No, no, no. Their system is fine. It's just the expectations that they gave you or, or maybe other people in the space gave to him that that's yeah. probably what fucked him up to yeah. be very honest and yeah. i think that also has to do we were talking about it in the car once again we talked yeah. about it a lot that <laughs> the space is just very toxic and very fucked up right and right. i think with forex it's even worse than it's crypto. it's super tainted like yeah. he for example now it's worse it's worse, worse yeah, than, yeah. than crypto 100 percent. we were talking about it the reason why is due to the affiliate system in forex so yeah. what ah, they want right. is someone just signing up to one of their brokers then they get a one-time payment, right? And then they're like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, I, I, right. I lured yeah. you in, you signed up, I got my money, and now you can fuck <laughs> off. That's it. That, that's the entire issue. And for example, we were talking about it in the car. One of the guys in the Netherlands, and we're not gonna name any names, of course, but one of the guys that you see a lot on 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 ads on Instagram, mm -hmm. and trying to lure you in to his program, and it's all free, it's all free. Right. He bought a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with Max the other day. Right, and it's kind of nuts, right? Because he's acting like he's mentoring people and all of that, and he has the entire game figured out. Yeah, and he now bought the one-on-one -on -one mentorship program with Max. Yeah, and we were like, it's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, but I mean, like, look, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's part of the game. It's um, can't really hate the player. Uh, it's 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 a tainted True. space. True. At the end of the day, yeah. regardless, good stuff. Um, yeah. Um, I think to 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 you know. Uh, to sum it up, or I, I would like you actually to sum it up, um, because Forex is a whole new ballgame, and I think yep, let's uh, hey, let's dive deeper into it when the uh, volatility in the in the crypto market dries up eventually. Let's let's you know let's well all together here dive yeah, deeper yeah, into because yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, I don't have enough mental space <laughs> yet to to and you know try to get you know to green numbers in, yeah. uh, in crypto and start Forex. I tried sure. it a little bit, but you know, sure. that didn't work. <laughs> it's just sure. too much. Um, uh, but if you know someone listening to this, um, what would be the three uh, main takeaways about forex that he would you know you know have to remember um, so that in his mind he knows yeah what sticker to put on it? Yeah, um, I think the main three t like takeaways from forex trading is that one it's 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 a slow process, it's a slow yeah, burner, right. um, but exponentially I think the skills that you learn from it can reward you. Um, in the long run a lot more consistently compared to other markets um, secondly forex in terms of knowledge there is so much out there and my goal would be for anyone listening is just to focus on one thing 
um, because you can go into macroeconomics, you can go into algorithmics, you can go into all of these different aspects of Forex because it's an actual you know, global purpose and you can yep. dive into so many rabbit holes. It would be to stick to one concept and, and just really try to work that out, um, whether you want to become a fundamental analyst or more technical oriented or you want to develop your own algorithms just focus on one right because there's going to be so much noise uh with with forex that can blur your vision and your essential goal which is to make money um and then on that note is that you're not gonna make money anytime <laughs> soon let's just be completely honest with yeah, forex trading yeah. it's not the holy grail give you're, it time give it time yeah. um and and there's a saying uh forgot how nicely it goes but the whole concept with planting a tree today you're going to reap the rewards obviously a lot later yeah. Yeah. but the best time to plant a tree is now um or it was yesterday it's or something like background. that yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Shit, that's your remember, like the, 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 the best yeah. time to plant a tree was 20 years ago the next best time is today yeah or the, uh, the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit yeah yeah, exactly <laughs> that. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Smile. <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. Brought us in crime. What a way to do this podcast. Uh, so, so that that's one thing. Uh, none of these markets are are a get rich quick scheme. Um, just like with any you know subject, you have to put in hours. And right. there's a psychological mental note that I keep to myself is once you've checked off that a thousand hours, you're gonna be a lot of steps further away from where you started and hopefully knock on wood money is going to be the byproduct yeah, of your sure, yeah. work that you've put in yeah yeah good stuff great thank you for thank you for having me and thank you for being our guide in the forex trading so yeah. thank you very much thanks. thanks thank you for for having me it was good a pleasure stuff. great right. uh, amazing